The Hanley Page Harrow was produced as a stopgap bomber to help fuel the RAF expansion effort in the mid-late 1930s. Designed by Dr. Gustav Luckmann and known as the HP-54, it was similar to the HP-51 design. Some authors describe the HP-54 as a production version of the HP-51, although there was some notable changes. These included the HP-54 featuring a longer fuselage that was more oval in shape, improved Bristol Pegasus engines, and the addition of a gunner in a mid-upper position. The HP-54 though did keep the same wing design as that of the HP-51. The HP-51 itself had been a monoplane conversion of the biplane Hanley Page HP-43. There is some debate around the Harrow's origins. Some sources state that the HP-54 was produced to meet Air Ministry specification B-334, which called for a monoplane bomber to replace the Hanley Page Hayford and Vickers Virginia bombers. However, other sources state that the HP-54 was designed to meet Air Ministry specification C-2631, calling for a new bomber transport aircraft, with Hanley Page originally planning on submitting the HP-51 design, but switching to the HP-54 at the last minute. Regardless, what is known is that the RAF decided to order 100 Harrows straight off the drawing board in August 1935 as an interim stopgap bomber with a new specification B-2935 being written specifically for the order. At the time, the RAF was starting to undertake a massive and rather rapid expansion and as such needed more aircraft to support its growth. Hence, while not being the most capable bomber of the time, the Harrow would act as a stopgap bomber until better and more modern types were available. From there, it would be relegated back to transport duties. The Harrow's first flight occurred on the 10th of October 1936 with major quarters at the controls. The aircraft was considered the first production model with both nose and tail gun placements fared over. The first 38-39 sources differ, aircraft off the production line were considered the Harrow Mark I, with 850 horsepower Bristol Pegasus 10 engines and a top speed of 190 miles per hour. It was capable of carrying a 3,000 pound bomb load in an internal bomb bay and defensive armament consisted of one Lewis gun in a nose turret, one Lewis gun in a mid upper position and another two Lewis guns in a tail turret. These would later be upgraded to Vickers K machine guns. The first handful of Harrows were delivered to the RAF without their turrets installed, these being retrofitted later to the aircraft. The first Harrows ended in RAF service during January 1937 with number 214 squadron at RAF Scrampton, later moving in April to RAF Foutwell. By the end of 1937, another four RAF squadrons had been equipped with a type. The final 61-62 aircraft, depending on which source you take, were produced as Harrow Mark IIs and had the more powerful 925 horsepower Bristol Pegasus 20 engines, which allowed an additional gain of 10 miles per hour. Production would end with the 100th aircraft in December 1937. By the end of 1939, the RAF had phased it out of frontline bomber service, with many being relegated into transport duties. As a transport, it could carry 20 fully equipped troops, and a number had their nose and tail turrets replaced with more streamlined fairings, these becoming known as sparrows. Number 271 Squadron would utilise, among other types, a group of Harrows for transport and air ambulance duties right up until the end of the war, with at least two being used to evacuate wounded soldiers from Arnhem during Operation Market Garden in September 1944. The Harrow would also undertake a few rather unusual missions. In October 1940, Number 420 Flight was formed at RAF Middle Wallop, where they would use Harrows as aerial mine layers fitted with long aerial mines, LAMs. LAMs were small explosive charges that were attached to parachutes with about 2,000 foot of wire trailing from below it. The idea was that a group of the LAMs would be dropped in front of a wave of enemy bombers. When the enemy bombers hit the wire, the top parachute would detach, a parachute at the end of the wire would expand, and the explosive would run down the wire, hitting and destroying the bomber. 
It is believed that about 4-6 to six kills were achieved this way, but after 3 months, the RAF decided that it was not an effective measure and the activity came to a halt. The other odd job was that in 1939, three Harrows were registered on the Civil Registry and fitted with aerial refueling capabilities. They would be used as tankers to undertake air-to-air -air refueling with short Empire flying boats on their transatlantic crossings. One was based at Foynes Island and two were based at Newfoundland in Canada, where in 1940 at least one joined the Royal Canadian Air Force. The fleet air arm had submitted an order for 100 Harrows but never received any as Hanley Page did not have the capacity to fulfil the order. The last Harrow was retired from service in May 1945. For an aircraft deemed as a stopgap interim aircraft, it would serve the RAF well and soldier on perhaps longer than it should have. <laughs>